Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. We will be talking about VX Model and Polyworks Modeler and the difference between these two programs as far as it comes to cleaning up models and doing reverse engineering with them. Uh, my name is uh, Tim Crennan and I'll be your host today and we're just going to do a quick dive into these and not get too bogged down in the details. So how it works, we're mainly going to be looking at reverse engineering. So Reverse engineering means we're going to try and uh, build a solid CAD model from the actual geometries that we required via scan data. Uh, in this case, we scanned our everything up with um, a Creoform 3D scanner, and then we're going to use that data to actually kind of extract useful information of from it, send it over to a CAD package like SolidWorks, and then rebuild it up so we have full parametric geometry that we can actually go in and edit and change and you know, alter diameters of circles and where we're going to do cuts and the actual geometry of our part in an intelligent way. So when you have something scanned and you end up with a uh, mesh, you have a 3D mesh, it's basically a point cloud that we joined all the points together to make an actual surface. And then from there, depending on what type of scanner you have, you have more or less uh, back-end work to do to actually clean up this uh, mesh to make it a very nice, smooth, geometry that can actually extract useful data from easily. Uh, worse scanners, crappier scanners out there will just be more of this uh, back-end work to get to a point where we can even start extracting data from it usefully. We'll show you how we can do that within VX model and Polarworks Modeler and how we can go in and we can patch holes for uh, missing sections of data where we can interpret our own geometry there. We can clean up the mesh, so if it uh, has a bumpy surface or it didn't have enough data to normalize, it'll be rough looking. We can smooth it out. We can decimate the mesh, make it lighter weight. We can make it watertight. Uh, we can merge multiple meshes together. Uh, we can do lots of things to make actually working with the part much easier. Uh, we can also take multiple scan data and align them together within the software to get a much larger geometry to work with. So, for instance, in this car example, if you wanted to scan an entire car, it's going to be a lot of data. It's going to be a lot of points that we're going to be taking off it with a good 3D scanner. So instead of doing that all in one scan session, which could be take a long time, or most computers just aren't powerful enough to deal with all that in one go, we can scan it in multiple sections and then line them up and do a best fit to align these all together. So, so far, everything we're talking about, both of these softwares can do all this. They just do it two different levels and different ways of getting to it. But Poly VX model and Polyworks modeler can both clean up meshes, align meshes, work with multiple meshes, do surface best fits on them. Uh, we can also generate NURB surfaces and uh, geometric you know, entities that we can actually extract from this mesh data too. And that ranges from 2D geometry for just a flat plane, a circle, to 3D entities like cylinders and cones and actual surf service data. So we can actually auto surface, make NURB surfaces, and make a whole uh, pat bunch of patches of data that we can actually then apply to the uh, model. And all of this we can actually send over to uh, our SOLIDWORKS software and have it come in as useful data. So we'll be bringing over planes and cylinders and circles and cross sections and surface data as those actual features on sketches on their own planes has their own surface data. So it actually gives us something useful to work with. As far as transferring the uh, data over, so depending on which software we're using, uh, with VX model, it's extremely easy. There's actually built into the software where we can, uh, once we generated and extracted our entities, we can send those directly to SOLIDWORKS just via one button click and it'll package it up, send it over, or on either software, on Polyworks or VX model, we can save them out as IGIS or STEP files. And that has the actual kind of CAD data in it that we're extracting. And that can be used to open back up in SOLIDWORKS or any other CAD package and have the actual useful data to work with. So in this picture, that's kind of an example of a, uh, a surface data that we've extracted. So to get a little bit more specifics, as far as VX elements goes, uh, that's kind of the uh, you know, parent software of VX model. So VX models with inside VX elements. And this works directly with the Creaform 3 scanners. Uh, you can do inspections with it, and you can also do this VX model reverse engineering with it. And when we're, uh, if we use the software, it actually generates 
the file goes straight to an STL mesh on the fly, and we don't have to deal with point clouds at all, which makes life very easy. So VX model, we can you know edit part, uh, the mesh, patches, smooth it up, create entities, extract useful data from it, directly send it over to SolidWorks with the API, or send it over separately as I just your step files. So we're gonna go ahead and jump into that. We can take a look at what VX model looks like. And it looks like this. So it's a very clean, uh, user-friendly interface, which is nice. It's not overly complicated. It's very easy to pick up. Uh, it's very intuitive. So you can see what's going on. So here's a uh, scan of a part I already brought in. So we scanned it with the Creeform scanner, and then I brought it into VX model. And that's all we've done to it so far. So we can do all kinds of things in here, like patch up holes and extract data. So if we want to patch up holes, we can take a look at the hole patch wizard. Let me go ahead and just make a hole in here real quick. Just delete that data. So we can see that it's, you know, we have a hole through a part. So I can go ahead and grab my hole wizard. And the hole wizard is in this program, and also Polarworks is very powerful. Or I can just click a hole and it'll patch it right on over. And we have some control over how it's patching it. So we can either do the whole hole at once, partial patch, a bridge across if we don't want to do the whole area. Uh, we can say if we want it to be curvature based, flat or adaptive, how many layers in of triangles it's going to look for interpreting those curved data and all that. And we can go and just start patching up our holes that way. Uh, we can also defeature parts without the mesh, you know, clean it up however we might see fit here. Uh, if we wanted to defeature something, so if I didn't want this rib to be here, I can just go in and grab this section and go ahead and tell it to defeature. And it'll go ahead and uh, delete that out and interpret its own surface around it. So it's really easy to start working with and cleaning up. And, you know, We can smooth our mesh and decimate triangles or refine it and things like that. Uh, we can also clean up the whole mesh. So if we, after you scan something, you might have a bunch of little overlapping triangles and spikes that we can't see from this, but will make extracting data harder. So we see over on the left here, we show, oh, it has a bunch of spikes and small holes and singular vertices and stuff that could cause problems later on. So let's go ahead and tell the uh, program to clean that up for us. And it's gonna go and try and eliminate that from our model. We won't see any visual difference because it's all very small things that are causing these issues. And then it's done. Everything mostly goes to zero. And we're good to go to move on and start extracting some data. So now to actually extract data to send over to SolidWorks, we have a bunch of feet entities over here we can add in. So we can use these along with these selection tools over on the right to easily select bunches of triangles and have it apply an entity to that selection. So right now I'm on plane select and it defaults over to similar normals, and I can go ahead and grab a series of uh, these triangles on here, and it's gonna grab everything with a similar normal based on, I can adjust the tolerance, and then it's gonna best fit a plane to that, and we can even see the, over on the left here, a, a breakdown of the air distribution of these triangles that's selected for how much they're out of deviation on that. So 99% are within plus or minus 0.1 millimeters, that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and hit create, and we can start creating uh, entities like this. I can grab the outside here, and we just go through and start creating planes and data. We put them wherever we might need to. Uh, once we have that, we can go through and start, we can grab some different data. So if we want to grab some cylinder data or cones, so I can say, hey, there's a cone inside of here, and grab that, and it's going to best fit a cone onto the inside. And again, our air distribution is very accurate. It's a very uh, pretty good scan we have here. And you know, I can grab the outside of the cone. That one's a little bit more off target because you see how far down the sides it's selecting. And we can go through and I can deselect parts and adjust the, uh, refine my selection. We can automatically grow or shrink our selection just with a couple quick clicks up here. Or we can go through and, uh, you know, reselect in a specific uh, tolerance, so I can even paintbrush the stuff on. So I'm going to say, hey, grab all the stuff in here. Best fit a cone for that. And just grab more around the side so it you know, has more data to fit to. Alright, and then that fits a much tighter cone, and I could refine that more if I wanted to. 
Uh, we can also grab a uh, bolt pattern and stuff is a really powerful version. So once I have like this top plane up here, and I want to actually grab this bolt pattern up top, I can go through and I can grab my circle feature, tell it what plane to assign this part to, and then I can go in and select the inside of that cylinder. It's going to, from that cylinder of data it's grabbing, it's going to put that circle cross section on that plane. And we can go through and I can just do that to all of these holes. And we could grab the actual bolt pattern. So now when we use this to model a part back up in SOLIDWORKS, uh, we'll have the exact data to model our part around and not worry so much about, uh, you know, oh, did I caliper those weird angles properly or anything. We can grab cross-section data directly from here. If I wanted to create a cross-section based off of that plane, or we can use this side plane over here. And I can offset it into the part. And you can see it's actually going to create a, a cross section here. And if I expand out my entities over here, this is all the entities I've been creating are in this list. For the cross section, we have all that data going across. We can create much more cross sections depending on what you want to do with it. If I wanted to cross section this entire part and get, you know, not 140, but maybe 14 cross sections or 10. Let's see how long it takes to generate 140 cross sections. And basically it's going to slice up our part like a loaf of bread all the way down it. And then we could take those and bring those over directly into SOLIDWORKS and we could just do a bunch of loft operations or something across these and rebuild up our whole part. 140 is usually a bit more than I would uh, typically do on a part this side. Uh, keep it down to something like 10, but we can see uh, how well that would represent our surface. Uh, let's drop that down to 10, get something a little bit uh, quicker to transfer back over to SOLIDWORKS. So let's create that. Now I have a whole bunch of cross sections. We can even go in and create a uh, NURB surface data in here very easily. So I can go grab my auto surface and we can go in and let's just grab a chunk of this weird curved stuff over here. Drop the number of patches it's going to make just so it generates a little bit quicker for us. And it's going to fit the surface with a whole bunch of square patches that each have. Uh, right now we have it set to eight control points and it's going to be a very close approximation of the surface. Now you kind of see all the uh, square patches is built on here, laid right on top of the part. So I'm going to leave that out right now for transferring over because that takes a bit more processing power. But if we see in SOLIDWORKS I have open here in the background, uh, we have nothing on this. This is a blank part file and it's just sitting here waiting for us to send some data over to it. So with all of these features selected from VX model, I can go over here to the top middle and click transfer to SOLIDWORKS and we'll go ahead and transfer all of this data directly over to SOLIDWORKS for us. And it you know, takes a minute and the reason I'm not transferring the surface is because it takes a little bit longer. It's harder for it to trans over, transfer over a bunch of NURB surface data than say sketches with uh, drawings on them. But now here it is, it popped up on the screen. Uh, here's our SOLIDWORKS part. So here's the cross-section data. Here's the planes I created. Here's the bolt pattern on top that are constrained to a plane. You see they come over to our feature manager as actual circles features, actual cross-sections. We have actual cones from the cone data extracted. And we could even add design intent to this where I could give constraints to the cone saying, oh, be perpendicular to this plane axis when I was creating them. Uh, adjusting their diameters and things like that to be, you know, something that would have more intelligence to it than whatever we just scanned, basically. So, and with all this data, we can use this to actually go in and start extracting data, creating data. If I wanted to, you know, go in and analyze one of these, I can edit that sketch. It comes over as an actual spline. That's just fixed in space. We could sketch our own spline over the top of it and use this all I kind of like as a uh, design template to build our part up. So that is a super quick overview of the X model.
So now we also have the Polyworks software. Uh, one of the main differences between the Polyworks software and VX model is that Polyworks works with almost every scanning solution out there where you're acquiring mesh data, you're, prying, you're acquiring point cloud data, you're getting uh, just points, laser trackers, or CMM machines. Polyworks works with almost all data that you can acquire out there. And it's kind of like VX Elements, where this is like the parent software, and within that we have Polyworks Inspector and Polyworks Modeler. So with Polyworks Modeler, uh, this does basically the same stuff that VX Model is doing, except you get even more control and more precise control over every little aspect of it. Um, with that, it makes it a more complicated software to actually use. Uh, there's a lot more things you can adjust and change on there, but you know you can do all that for a specific reason. So depending what you actually need out of it, if VX Elements was all you needed to do, or in VX Model, then that's all you have to worry about. But if you need a lot more control and you want more precise patch it, NURB patch surfaces created, more precise cross sections, more precise hull patching, then this would be more of the direction to go. So here's the same thing. This is the Polyworks Modeler software. Uh, I've imported the exact same um, mesh data. And from here, we can do all the same things we were doing within Polyworks or VX model, where we can smooth out the surface, patch holes, um, create splines, defeature parts. Uh, we have some more control over uh, how we calculate the triangles, and you know we can resample the triangles on the part, remesh it with a new mesh of triangles, depending on what our scan data gave us. So if we're just scanning like a cube, and we bring it in, and it has a hundred thousand triangles on it, we can resample that down to a much smaller uh, triangle mesh size because we don't actually need that much data because there's no curves. And we can go through, and we can have uh, precise control over creating our nerve patches fitting them to the part, uh, fitting them to specific lines. If we wanted to see how we could actually patch some holes on here, uh, the hole patching can even be more powerful in this software too. So if I want to, let's delete out a chunk of data here real quick. All right, so this is a kind of funky hole around a curve and that could cause trouble for patching. Um, and if we had harder surfaces to patch, let's say we had more of a a sharp curve over here and grab all the way down here. All right, so if we wanted to patch over this, what we can do is with the hole patching tools, they have a specific uh, gap filling and uh, fillet patches. So I can go in and say, hey, from here to here and then shoot across. We can have it actually interpret specifically for that fillet curve and say, hey, this is going to be a complex curve, and then we can patch both sides of it. And that ends up doing a really nice job of patching those complex compound curves and everything really easily. And then from there, we can go in and do, you know, add lines, add cross sections, and then we can't export these directly over to um, SolidWorks, but we can export any data we create out directly as IGES files and then open those up within SolidWorks and it'll come over the same way as their own planes with their own sketches and features on them. So it's just easily, but that's really the best way to get around to reverse engineering parts. Uh, if you don't have that data to actually bring over directly into SolidWorks, you're going off of pictures you took and using sketch pictures or taking a bunch of crazy caliper measurements. So an example of some people successfully doing some reverse engineering is uh, the Air Corp Aviation is a uh, based out of Minnesota. And they were reverse engineering these complex aerospace parts. So they have this big part, it's got a specific curvature to it, it's varying, it's got a hole pattern punched in it, a uh, sheet metal part. Typically it would take them about a week to reverse engineer this part and then by hand, by using calipers and everything before they brought in uh, you know, some reverse modeling software. So with the uh, Creeform scanners and the, uh, the VX model software specifically, they're able to scan the part, go and extract all the bolt pattern holes here, take that bolt pattern holes, send those over to SolidWorks, go and extract the whole mesh data across it to get the actual surface data to deal with. 
send all that over to SolidWorks, and then they could reverse engineer the part. And it went, they were able to reduce their time from a week to reverse engineer the part down to five hours. Um, I really like this example because this shows that reverse engineering still takes a bit of work. There's a bit of elbow grease, there's a bunch of engineering involved still. It's not just scan a part, boom, you have a finished parametric solid reverse engineerable part. You can scan a part and get it ready for 3D printing a copy of it pretty easy. But if you want to actually change things on that, change diameter, change hole placement, stuff like that, bolt patterns, then you have to reverse engineer the part up. So this part probably took them a whole five, ten minutes to scan, but then, you know, four and a half hours of actual reverse engineering through SolidWorks later, now you have your finished part. So it still takes a little bit of time, but dramatic improvement to the old ways of being able to reverse engineer parts. So that about wraps up the uh, reverse engineering versus uh, VX model versus Polyworks and Modeler overview. And then if anybody has any questions about this, feel free to contact me directly or you can contact us directly uh, at CATI. Uh, give us a call and we'll be more than willing to answer any questions or help you guys out as needed.